Fala Blahiatu and good evening. Leading our news bulletin for tonight, Niue's budget for 2011 to the year ending June 2012 has now been passed in the House of Assembly after a week of discussions in the Niue Legislative Assembly. The budget passed is just over $23 million, with some departments increasing its financial appropriation. Government of the, few, the Days focus also reflect in the new approved budget with private sector and tourism development. Much debate also went into whether the public servants can make a difference in the public sector as a handful of public servants leave the public service to try out the business sector with a $128,000 initiative being questioned by the opposition. With much of the discussions of the budget, one motion was tabled this week by Member of Parliament for a Lofi North, Honourable Rainga Tukitanga, tabled a motion to remove the $15 line charge included in the power bills for customers around the island with a clear support from 14 members voting for the removal with only three opposing the motion. The motion that received much support from the members of the House has yet to be decided on by Cabinet after favourably passed in the House of Assembly. The $15 line charge that was introduced a few years ago and much debated in the House looks likely to change again only if Government of the Day agrees to do so, but with over $120,000 per annum received in revenue from the $15 line charge, it will be a hard decision for government to forego the extra charge on power usage. Another issue that was unclear to many people is whether the NCT has been charged twice for fuel. In clarification, Treasury Department and Bulk Fuel has confirmed that NCT is only charged once by Bulk Fuel to their customer in which the cost is offloaded to the consumer in order for the bulk fuel customer to recover their spending cost. As with previous budget, there was much discussions and debates by the members of the House, but with a bulk of budget appropriate for personnel vote items, the final conclusion of the budget discussion has been passed by the House for the recurrent operational expenditure, capital purchases and investment and development projects a sum of which does not exceed $23,804,000 in total, as well for development partner investment and development projects, a sum of which does not exceed $23,087,000 in total. New developments to the election challenges in the village of Makehu in the latest move, the former MP Tofu Puletana, who lost his seat by one vote to Salilo Tonghia, has asked the Court of Appeal to recount the votes in light of a judge's decision to quash a decision of the New Public Service Commission. A judicial review found the Commission did not carry out a proper investigation into an appeal to remove two votes from the Namkul roll and reinstate them on the Makefu village roll. The judge requested that the New Public Service Commission reinvestigate its decision to change the electors' names. The New Public Service Commission says independent committee has been set up to meet the judge's orders, but this week papers were filed with the Court of Appeal requesting a recount, but there is no indication at this stage what the matter will be or when the matter will be considered by the court. Efforts to finalise Niwe's forestry management plan are in the progress with a consultation into the first draft that was held yesterday. Two consultants from SPC's Land Resources Division met with key stakeholders from the department as well as landowners to explain elements within the management plan and to gauge what value or importance landowners hold on the forest and its uses. This is also part of SBC's regional assistance to help countries. The, the forest resources of Niue are a great asset to Niue. They're, they're full of biodiversity, uh, they provide a, a wonderful environment for the people of Niue, they provide them with a lot of food. Um, in terms of ecotourism, it's one of the reasons that people come to Niue. It's got this very green, pleasant um, environment, it's unspoilt. 
So, so the forests are a very important asset to, 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 uh, to Niue. We know that um, probably about 21% of the island has um, primary forest, that is forest that hasn't been highly disturbed by agriculture or other disturbance in the past. So it's, it's full of biodiversity, it's got very big timber volumes. So those are all values that uh, we've now been able to record through an inventory process. And, and the next step is to talk to the landowners about how we can best put a management pl plan together that looks at all of the forests of Niue, not just individual properties, but looking at this collectively for the benefit of all of the people of Niue. So the response from landowners that have been present in today's um, consultation, um, how is it looking? The response has been very good. People of, of, of Niue really like their forests, so they're very interested in their forests. They're, they're concerned about what might happen in the future, they're, so they need information. So one of the things that's come through very clearly in the consultations is that people need more information. So there's a big role there to give them the information that we have on what the values are in the forest, um, how they can be managed, what the implications are of doing certain things in the forest, and, and working cooperatively. Uh, landowners, the government and the, the industry players, whether it's uh, people wishing to process timber or put in ecotourism development, they all need to work together so that these things can be done cooperatively and, and, and one use of the forest isn't causing a problem for another use of the forest. We are not trying to impose a management system to the new ends or to the to new We are trying to get your views as owners of the forest and as you are well versed with uh, uh, and also know how you value the forest. So that's, that's different from place to place. So those are the views that we're trying to, to take into consideration before we actually draw up a management plan that will um, enable new way to manage your resources on a sustainable basis. So when you talk about sustainability, you're basically looking at environmental issues, you're looking at social issues, and of course you're looking at economical issues as well. But uh, um, at this workshop, we are going through the first draft of the management plan that we develop, but there's been discussions that uh, after we fine-tune the plan, it will probably go further down to the communities for further consultation and training and awareness on the management plan itself. The forests are a great asset for Niue that thrives on its clean green image. For ecotourism, it is also valued for cultural significance as well as timber production potential. Forestry is a long-term business and uh, people highly value their forests for a number of reasons and uh, what we're trying to do is to get um, a good consultation going on what those values are that people really put an importance on and how they can be best managed and protected into the future. So what are those values that have been highlighted in New Year's case? Uh, we've, we did a survey back in June and July of landowners to see uh, what they saw as important about their forests and the results are very interesting. Uh, something like 90% of landowners saw hunting and collecting of non-timber forest products, food, ferns, those sorts of things, as, um, as, as really important, a, a top value for them. But they also looked at other issues like biodiversity, which are more public issues. You know, biodiversity is shared by everyone, but individual landowners also rated that as a high priority for them, that they have to manage and conserve the biodiversity. Uh, they also identified the, the cultural use of the forest, the, the cultural sites, the links with their history as being something that they wanted to protect and, uh, and manage into the future. And, uh, and, and lastly, timber production was an option that some were interested in. And, and from the survey, about a third thought that that was a value that they might be interested in, in getting some economic return from their forest. Um, about a third didn't rate that as an important value. And, and the other third were interested in more information. They haven't made their mind up. The aim is to work cooperatively for the sustainable management of forest resources for the benefit of all people on Niue. A loud thunder-like noise in the dead of night was a bit of a shock for some residents on the island. Some reportedly saying they heard a big bang just after 11 on Tuesday night that could be heard as far as Liku and Avaseli. One resident is said to have thought that it may have been a whale, as they have been quite vocal and active at bay for the past few nights. But the likelihood of it being loud enough to be heard at different locations on the island is highly unlikely. As the word gets around, even a call to the newer meteorological service to see whether 
anything had registered on their radar and the response was nothing out of the ordinary. Following many calls of concern from the public, a member of the Disaster Management Council contacted the Carter Observatory in Wellington and the response was, considering the description of a or accounts reported by members of the public, it was probably a meteorite that detonated at 12 to 18 kilometers above Niue as it entered the Earth's atmosphere. It is most likely that it disintegrated into the ocean. With that information, residents can now put their minds at ease, but one can't help but remain intrigued by this event. Now those are our news stories that we have for you this evening and we do hope that you enjoy the weekend ahead. Don't forget to check out the Tamgotonga Annual Village Show Day that will be held this coming Saturday and don't forget to take the whole family out there.